Hi, and welcome back to Joe Talks Cars, and welcome to a really exciting video. Today, I've got the keys to the Golf GTI Mark 8.5 Club Sport. It's the top model of Golf GTI you can currently buy, and I'm gonna find out whether it really is a true Golf GTI. So many regular viewers of my channel will know that I own a Golf GTI Mark VI and I absolutely love that car. We've completed over 100,000 miles in it and it's just completely faultless in my eyes. I don't see how VW can make the Golf any better because for me, adding all these modern things in, lane assist, all these crash detection and all this sort of stuff, that takes away from what a GTI should be about. GTI should be about plain simplicity manual gear changes and talking about the manual gearbox it's no more the gti is no longer available as a manual or at least not in this country in the us you can get a manual but here in the uk we're stuck with dsg now i'm not suggesting that dsg is a bad gearbox of course it's not it's sublime it's one of the fastest gearboxes that is available in any car but it somehow does take away some of the enjoyment and fun you get from a car. Interacting with a manual gearbox is where you get a lot of fun from, especially in a GTI. And I have to say, in the short drive that I've had this, the gearbox is the biggest letdown for me. But gearbox aside, what's the engine like? Well, it's a familiar two litre turbocharged engine, produces 296 horsepower, so way up on the 210 in my Mark VI. It's a different kettle of fish. It feels very much like a Golf R, but with a little bit less grip. The car accelerates from 0 to 60 in about 5.4 seconds if, and goes on to a top speed of 167. But here you can probably hear everything is now beeping at me because this car doesn't want me to exceed the speed limit. It doesn't want me to go across the white line. It wants me to be sensible and follow the rules, which for me, that's not what a GTI is all about. Luckily, however, VW have agreed with me to a certain extent, and there is a button down here called Assist. Go into that, and with a quick press, while you're driving, everything, all the rubbish, is gone. So now, it's up to me to control the car. There's no warnings and beeps and vibrating steering wheels and all that garbage that you don't want. That's gone. So now we've got all that sorted out, what's it like to drive? Well, as you can imagine, it feels like a Golf very similar to my Mark VI, and I think if you were blindfolded and got put in a passenger seat, you'd know exactly what you're driving, and that's a great thing. Suspension-wise, it's on the firm side, but I would say the right side of firm. It gives you a lot of confidence in the corners without being crashy, and that's in full Nürburgring Sport mode, which I have found within the car system, and I've put that on, of course, because I'm a child. We're not gonna drive around in comfort mode, we're going in Nürburgring full attack mode just for some B-roads in the UK. But I have actually tried out the comfort mode and I have to say the suspension really does slacken off. All the fake noise stops and the steering wheel, wheel lightens up so it makes it feel really normal. You could do lots of miles in this and not feel tired at all. It's just a really pleasant easy car to drive put it in Nürburgring mode, everything firms up and the car just feels like we're about to have an accident. <laughs> thought she was gonna pull out. The car just comes alive in your hands. And I will say though, that gearbox is just spoiling every bit of fun you could have with the car. It really is. And I don't wanna bang on about it too much, but it does remove so much enjoyment out of it. It does in a way remind me of a Golf R and many of you will know that I'm not a huge fan of the Golf R and I put it down to the four wheel drive, the kind of boring styling and I think a lot of it was the gearbox because they're all DSG gearboxes now and I think that's probably why I didn't like the Golf R and it's what's stopping me from really loving the GTI. I love everything about this car apart from this gearbox. It's just distracting, it's really distracting. Things that I do like though, without going on about the gearbox too long, exterior styling. They've made some subtle, but I would say really important changes over the Mark 8, and new headlight design looks really good. It really sets the car off. It's got some really cool fog lights. 
which aren't just circles, they're like a little pattern on the front. And um, yeah, I think I would probably just drive around with fog lights on permanently because it looks cool. It's got a new redesigned tail lamp as well. And generally, it's just a really nice, clean refresh. This isn't a new version of the car. It's just a quick facelift. And I think it needed it, to be fair. I don't think the Mark 8 really went down very well. And I think the 8.5 has just sort of fixed the slight issues that people had with the original. So yeah, the Mark 8.5, huge improvement over the last one, and it's generally an improvement overall. This car is better in every way than the Golf that went before it, and that's always the case. It's just that gearbox being the slight issue in my eyes, that maybe it's not a step forward, more of a step to the side. But let's talk about price, because these things don't come cheap. I always thought the Golf GTI was the everyman's sports car. It was a hot hatch, it was just for, for everyone. Everyone could afford one. I thought that was the point. This car starts at £38,000. That's before you put any options on it, and you're gonna want to. The wheels this car's running, they're optional. It's got an optional sunroof. It's got the bigger screen. By the time you've messed around with the configurator, you're looking at a car that's priced around forty-five to £50,000, which is a lot of cash. I did do some research, however, and I looked into the original Mark I GTI when that was launched. And when that came out in 1976, 1976 that car cost six and a half thousand pounds. And it would have taken 1.7 times your salary to afford it based on an average salary in the UK. This at 40, thousand for example would be about 1.4 times the average salary so actually it's got cheaper so when people say cars are getting too expensive when you take inflation into account this thing's a positive bargain and then the next thing to talk about is its rivals what are the rivals to the golf gti well in my eyes because i'm a massive gti fanboy there are no rivals to a gti there is no other car that comes close to offering what this car stands for, how it drives, and certainly how it looks, there's nothing that comes close. But if you were to have a look, maybe the Civic Type R or the Audi S3 would be competitors, both of which one is far too boring, the Audi, and the Honda Civic, you just couldn't be seen driving one of those. So like I said, there isn't competition. When it comes to the next model up, what VW would class as their range topper, the Golf R, why would someone choose this over an R? And for me, it's obvious. You're paying for that badge, that heritage that comes with the GTI badge. Everyone's got a Golf R these days. And for me, if you're into your cars and you're a driver, you want the GTI. So I could talk about the practicality of this car. I could talk to you about the boot space and all that sort of stuff, but I'm not interested in that and neither are you. You're looking for a car that is a Golf, which you know does everything, and you're just looking for something with a load more power, and that's what this offers. 296 horsepower. And it goes like this. It's seriously quick. It's seriously quick. As you can hear that noise as well, it sounds pretty good, but I do feel like most of that is actually fake. It's been pumped in, which is a little bit of a shame, but from the outside, sounds okay too. Being from wheel drive on these back roads, you do feel it scrambling around for grip a little bit. And that is what I love. I love the fact it does that. It makes it more engaging. And when you really press on in the right driving setting, even with this gearbox, it's a whole load of fun. When you're driving it around town, it maybe feels a little bit boring. Get it on a back road with a bit of mud, bit of leaves, wet road, you can have great fun. And that soundtrack, as much as it may be fake, I kind of like it as well. So I've maybe been slightly negative towards the gearbox in this, and although I still agree with all the comments I made, I know a lot of people won't, um, when you get this onto a back road and you really press on and you, and you use the gearbox, which I think it does encourage you to use, these paddles could be a bit larger, but they're easy to reach, and it's very, very quick to change. I feel like once you start using the paddles, it does sort of come alive 
a little bit more. So although it's no manual gearbox, it can still be a whole load of fun. Speed bump. Even in a world of speed bumps, it's not bad. And I'm bearing in mind I'm driving around this in, in Nürburgring mode. In my opinion, the only mode you should possibly drive this car in. Manual, Nürburgring mode, full send. <laughs> I almost like it because it's a bit unhinged when you push it too hard and it scrambles around for grip. And that's probably why I don't like the Golf R. I don't like the Golf R as much because it's too good. It's got too much grip. This has got just enough for its 300 horsepower, but get it on a nice twisty wet road and it's so much fun. The Golf GTI Mark 8.5. Would I buy one and would I swap my Mark 6 for it? I think I possibly would. I do think the car would be better if it was optionable with a manual gearbox. But once you get used to the DSG and you start to play with it and really use those gears, which it's really good at and it changes when you want it to change, then I think it does represent really good fun and when you consider its price against its rivals it's also really good value for money i don't think there's many hot hatches out there that look wow look at that in front of, wow ferrari trailer there's not that many cars out there today which look this good but also remain classy i think the gti is not a yobbo car it always looks good in every situation you're never going to get people looking at you like you're an idiot but equally it's not boring either you can transport the whole family in it, being a Golf. It's got Isofix on the rear seats. It's just a Golf, but it's a lot more fun. Living with the Golf GTI on a daily basis, a lot of people complained about the Mark 8. They said the infotainment was awful, the haptic controls on the steering wheel were annoying, which they were. I had a lot of experience with all the VW products that had the old infotainment, the old haptic buttons. They were dreadful. They were absolutely shocking. And now they replaced all that and they've given us this new 12.9 inch touchscreen. It's really easy to use, really quick to navigate. I mean, I've jumped straight in the car. I've never, I haven't been in one for a while. I was able to get my heated seat on, get the temperature set right, mute the music, turn off all the crazy driving assists and just get on with the job of driving. So infotainment wise, they've got it down to a, down to a T. There's buttons where there needs to be buttons and there's touchscreen where the it's better to have a touchscreen. So yeah, it's a huge plus for the infotainment in this car. So I think my initial impressions of the Golf GTI Mark 8.5 were a little bit wrong. I think when I got in the car, the immediate response was, it's an auto, it's gonna be terrible. And I'm a huge fan of the auto, don't get me wrong, my Porsche is an automatic. I get slated in the comments all the time for this. And I enjoy the automatic in that. And I think I was, I got into this under the impression that I was not going to like it. And I allowed that to make me feel that it wasn't very good. But actually, when you get used to it and you leave it in manual and you actually enjoy the gearbox and the fact that it responds and it gets the right gear that you want, it doesn't stop you. It just allows you to have the gear, it allows you to downshift. And if you put it in sport mode or Nürburgring mode, the gear shifts are nice and punchy. You can feel them it starts to make a little bit more sense and it becomes a lot more fun. And fun is what the GTI is all about. So maybe I did the car a little bit of a disservice at the beginning, but I think I'm coming round to the idea of this gearbox. And this bus in front is doing my head and he's doing 12 miles an hour. I know he's learning, but come on. Learning to drive, he's doing 12. Quick overtake. Power's there. Power is definitely there. 300 horsepower used to be too much in a front wheel drive car. Now it's about right. I think it, the added power does add a lot to it because it makes it a little bit more sketchy. And I think that's probably where our Mark VI is probably not as interesting as this because the Mark VI, you can put your foot down pretty much any gear. It doesn't scramble around or anything. It's got 210 horsepower. 
it easily deploys that to the wheels. Once you start getting close to 300 in a front wheel drive car, it changes the dynamics of the car entirely and it scrambles around a bit, even with these good tires on it. But it makes it fun. It doesn't feel unsafe, but I like the way it's searching for grip. I enjoy that about it. And that's, I enjoy that more about this than I would a Golf R. Golf R's got far too much grip. It does sound good as well. Then I know it's fake, so don't go in the comments and say, oh, you like the fake noise? Well, I do like the fake noise, because you can't have real noise anymore. So we've got to get something. It's better than electric. I have totally changed my mind on this car. From getting in it and driving the first few miles to now, yeah, this thing is a true GTI. And I absolutely love it. 